Welcome to Whispers, everybody, on AM 1600 WKKX, the Valley's Watchdog. It is 7.05 p.m., about 18 degrees out here in downtown Wheeling. It is cold, and I like the two inches of snow we got, don't you, Lo? Yeah, I don't know whose ruler they were using, <laughs> but now I know why you're not cold. Why? <laughs> Uh, the, so the let's int- not talk about that. The introduction, <laughs> the introduction said brief nudity, so my shirt started to maybe. Come yes. Off. See, you mention the word and you get excited like that. <laughs> yes. Maybe I'm a little furry. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you should try that grizzly bear swimming. I, I, I wasn't gonna go there, Lola. <laughs> Thank God. Okay, our guest is gonna think we're bonkers. Oh, I know. He's, uh, he's been with us before, though. So he's used to us, maybe. Give us a call, 304-214-1600. If you're out of the area, call us toll-free, 866-514-1600. Uh, we, got a, we got a phone call there, Lowe? No? Okay. We're going to go on. You want to say anything first, Nikki? I'm good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm good. I'm good. I wish That's I could. a statement. So. I see. All right, we're going to go ahead and bring on our guest tonight, Mr. Stephen Bassett. He is arguably arguably the leading advocate in the nation for the for ending the 61-year government-imposed truth embargo regarding extraterrestrial presence engaging the human race. Mr. Stephen Bassett, hello. It's good to be with you all again. Well, it's good to have you back. Where, where exactly are you located? I, I should have asked that earlier. Well, Paradigm Research Group has been based in Bethesda, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C., since uh, 1996. Yeah, but wh- now, where are you? Where are you physically located? Okay, you said you're on the West Coast earlier when I talked to you. Oh, right now I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm on the West Coast uh, working on some projects. Okay, yes. so is it cold where you're at? Yeah, I'm I'm up in the Bay Area. Oh, okay. Uh, well, but it can't. It, honestly, it can't top us here. You know, to, right now it is the warmest it's been all day. At seven o'clock at night, it is eighteen degrees with a wind chill of like two, and they said we were going to get one to two inches of snow. The last time I had to clean my car off, there was a good four inches on it, and it's still coming down. So, yeah, this morning, well, this I morning we had six. Uh, <laughs> or I have to apologize. It's six five here without a cloud in the sky. I asked you if it was cold. You said yes. You're well, in the Bay Area. I, uh, 65 <laughs> is cold for California. What well, is cold for California? I'd love for it to be 65 oh, right I now. Know. I'd great. like it to break freezing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> 65, I'm gonna break out the shorts. <laughs> Let's hope it stays cold. Then. <laughs> well, now kidding. next next week it's supposed to be cold uh, when Barack Obama's sworn in as president. And if I, from talking to you earlier, you have a new project you guys are working for and you wanted to come on the air and talk to us about with the citizens briefing book we didn't get much time to talk about that yeah can you explain that for us steve yeah nice segue on that by the way um <laughs> I, it was going to get worse here if i didn't step yeah. in so uh, you know this is uh, many of your listeners may not know but uh the the transition team for the new president set up a website called change.gov Look, let's face it, the future of politics and political activism in the American world is on the Internet. This is where it's all going to happen, so I don't think anybody's surprised by that. So this this transition website, change.gov, is, is truly extraordinary. It's, I think, unprecedented. Uh, and in, in concert with uh, the new president's view about inclusion and nonpartisanship and getting the people involved, they have done a number of things to try to get uh, view, views from the people, from citizens, about about what the president ought to do and not do and what have you. They've done several things, but the most recent one is particularly notable. It's called the Citizens Briefing Book, right? Uh, and the, the 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 website for it on change within change.gov, the transition headquarters website, is citizens, and that's plural, citizensbriefingbook. Dot change.gov citizensbriefingbook.change.gov so what, what's it all about it's real simple people can go there and if yeah uh, and, and you, have, you have to register on the site to do this but it's they don't ask for much information it's very basic very easy and they can submit an issue that they would like to see submitted to the president and then those issues are voted on by others and the most popular issues the ones with the most support will be put into a briefing book that will be given to the president 
the citizens briefing book. Great idea. Um, in any event, it also gives an opportunity for these ideas to get exposure because the ideas which are given the most votes are then derived to the top of the, the list and will stand out. Now, not surprisingly, the UFO ET disclosure issue has already got a number of issues. It's been represented on that uh, within these uh, these uh, uh, submissions already substantially mm-hmm. uh, and are already getting votes. And I think the highest we're up to is around 3,000 votes for one of the disclosure submissions. And this, so this is an unprecedented opportunity for those that think that the, issue, the UFO ET issue uh, the presence of extraterrestrials engaging the human race, which I believe has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, is actually a pretty big deal and needs to be addressed by the, the government and, and known by the people. They have a t- chance to really put this right out there and and uh, and put a book, which I think will give it a substantial cachet, as it were. And so what we need is really not more, based on the numbers that are that are in there now, we're seeing going on. We need about two to 3,000 people to go to the citizensbriefingbook.change.gov and vote these questions up, because that's what you can do. You can vote them up, you can vote them down. If you vote them up, they get 10 points. You vote them down, they get minus 10 points. Um, and about two to 3,000 people were to do that and, and vote all of the disclosure issues that are on there, unless one is objectionable to you, and vote positive on those. That would send them right to the top. And they need to do it immediately because I, I don't think this is going to be up for much longer. It, it's probably going to end right at the inauguration or right after the inauguration. We've got about six days. Perhaps it will go on a little longer, but I don't want to take that chance. Mm-hmm. So they need to go, and they need to go there right away and vote these issues. That doesn't take long at all. You, you can do it in less than five minutes. Now, Stephen, i got a question. Like, okay, let's say everybody that listens to this show starts voting these questions up. What are the chances that, that President-elect Obama actually, you know, gets an answer? What – what are the chances that something's actually going to be solved, I guess? Well, let's put it this way. Um, this this uh, program was announced a couple of days ago by the co-chair of the Transition Committee. They're making a big deal out of it. They're sending emails all over the country. These issues, you can clearly review them. You can see them. You can see how popular they are. You can see the ones that are getting the most votes. I think uh, one of the highest vote issues right now is uh, legalizing marijuana. I think we can all understand why that is. Right. Yeah. Uh, you knew that would be right there near the top, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you get you get my point. Uh, so it, it, it will be obvious that you know a million. And believe me, this site is getting millions and millions of hits a day. I mean, it's 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 a major site, it's an important site. Um, so if these issues are clearly near the top of the list, if they're turning up on page one when you go and uh, say the national security issues. By the way, when you submit the issue, you submit it for various areas. Like I, when I submitted my disclosure issue, and what I mean by disclosure issue, these are this this is fundamentally the issue is that the United States government, the administration, needs to tell the truth about the ET presence issue to the American people. No. Disclose, give us the truth. It, it's along these lines. Um, and these, and, and I submitted mine because I, I believe this issue is appropriate to national security. It's appropriate to homeland security. It's appropriate to energy and the environment. So I submitted under these categories. Mm-hmm. And so when you pull that category up, the top issues are right there at the top. You can order order them by popularity. And so it's going to be very evident to the people that are going to this site that these issues are in play. And so if they don't turn up in that briefing book, we're going to have a lot to say about that. Uh, it's also possible, and I'm speculating here that they know full well that this could happen. Mm. Uh, As I've talked before, I I believe that disclosure is already in the works. I believe that the Democrats have been thinking to do this for some time and that it could very well happen in the spring. It would make a lot of sense for them to give the people the opportunity to to demonstrate just how important this is to them. And that gives them some cover, doesn't it? If these issues are up near the top of the the, the issues submitted and receiving the most votes, then that gives them that much more cover to move ahead on this and also to sell uh, the disclosure event to those inside government that still have a say in how this goes forward, when this goes forward. So there's a lot at stake here, and all I can say is this. If if we can get 3,000 people to hit that site soon and get those votes up, and we get the totals up in the 40,000, 50,000 point range where they're clearly uh, at the top, 
I have a hunch it could significantly impact this issue, and we'll get and we'll get additional press because you know the press is going to be wanting to know what the top issues were, and when they find out that the disclosure issue is right up there, I think you're going to see some media picking up on that. Now, would you say that the best thing to do here is to go on to the uh, Citizen Briefing Book site and find the issue that you know has the most votes and just keep driving that one up, or to no, 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 go to uh, go to Citizens Briefing Book. Dot change.gov, which okay. is the page inside change.gov where they've got the citizen briefing book. That's correct. Right. And, 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 you, and you do a search. If you, you to call up, there's so many issues. Tens of thousands of issues have been submitted. But to bring up the disclosure issues, you need to do a search on either you put in disclosure in the search box or extraterrestrial. And that's what I'm doing now. Correctly. I'm actually at the site now. So I was looking yeah, for and, Or UFO. Any of those three terms, extraterrestrial, UFO, or disclosure, will bring up most of the ET UFO disclosure issues that have been submitted for the book. And then uh, vote them all, okay. right? Uh, it's, it's, vote them all. And, and, and unless one of them is, a couple of them may be cockamamie, and you say, ah, forget that. But the ones that are clearly stating the issue properly, uh, and, you can, and you can easily tell, the, the, the comments. Say, well, there's another factor to this, too, by the way, is that this thing is also set up to easily put comments. And so these things are accumulating comments by the hundreds. And those comments are significant. They're very strong, very solid. Uh, so that is, they're also seeing that. So we're, it's, it's an, they're making it very easy for the American people to express their views and their priorities to this presidency. You gotta admire this. Huh. And it's, this, obviously other issues are getting the same opportunity. But uh, this is an important one, and this is one that has been orphaned and, and neglected for far too long. And so I'm saying we need to be aggressive here. And go to the cha- uh, citizens briefing book dot change dot gov. Put in extraterrestrial or disclosure in that search box. Bring up the key issues and then check them. Vote them, vote them up. Now you can only vote once per per computer. They, they've got cookies in there to prevent it. You can multiple vote by deleting your cookies and voting again. And that's a pain in the butt. I'm not suggesting <laughs> people do that. I'm just just vote right. Just do your vote. And, but spread the word. I mean, if you've got an email list, send 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 the word out. Send this this link out to your friends. If you're in Facebook or MySpace, uh, contact your friends if you care about this issue. And if you happen to have a show, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there got got shows now in in, in blog radio and everything else, uh, or you have a blog site. Put a link up. Mention it to your people. We have a limited amount of time here to to make our presence known on this issue. Now, can you say I again, don't know when they're going to close it. Okay, so you yes. don't know for sure what the what the deadline day is. It's not clear. No, it's not clear. They may run it after the inauguration. They may not. Uh, clearly, they, they're not going to run it for much longer. So I think I'm, I'm assuming it's going to close on the 20th. Let's operate under that. So we've got six days to uh, or five days to get. Uh, six days to get uh, our votes in uh, and make our presence known on this issue, and it's easy. They've made it, it, it again. You can have you can be in, logged in, and and vote on all the key issues in under five minutes. Actually, I just did it. It took me one minute. Yeah, I, I, did I got too. in. Uh, I'm right now. I'm looking for uh, tip disclosure. The first one up here uh, says in the truth embargo on extraterrestrials. So mm-hmm. there's so. 24 of them because the first one is. Probably ending marijuana prohibition is going to come up on every single one of these. But there's That's what Lola voted for. <laughs> <laughs> there's 24 other ones that are dedicated to the disclosure or, mm-hmm. you know, just telling the truth. They're kind of worded differently, some of them. And you can organize them. I think you have the ability to sort them by comments. In other words, most comments uh, and so forth, most recent. But I think the comments is the way to go because the ones with the most comments are already getting the most votes. I mean, yeah. that's illogical. Uh, so, yes, um, it takes, as you say, it takes less than a minute. We need about 3,000 to get there right away. Now, look, I'd like to see a million points on that thing. I'd like 200,000 people go. But whatever. We just need to get in the top few in some of these categories that are appropriate, like energy and, and, and environment. Now, some people will say, well, why is disclosure of the ET president relevant to energy and environment? Well, as, if he is, as I and my colleagues have gone to great lengths to try to point out, there is ample evidence that technology derived and based on extraterrestrial sources, crash vehicles, essentially, have been in our hands since the late 40s, and that we have spent a great deal of money studying and reverse engineering 
in developing that technology. But it's not available because there was no way to bring it out into the public domain without ending the truth embargo, and the policy was not to end that truth embargo. And so until we end the truth embargo regarding the ET presence, we're not going to have access to that tech, and we need it now. Because if we're right about the uh, profound uh, uh, potential of the energy and the propulsion systems that that allows those craft to do what they do, and we can make that available to to serve as human needs right now, we could change the equations regarding a whole host of things, not simply the environment, but also the human condition, as well as the economy, since such tech would open up the, uh, the potential for a vast array of new business models and new new development manufacturing and new services that were not available now. And that's, that's, how, you, that's how you build back economies and providing uh, relief uh, to to the world, to people that don't have enough energy to grow food, to, to have fresh water. Making that available will obviously uh, go a long way to uh, improving uh, our standing in the world, since this tech has got to be shared, shared worldwide, carefully, of course. It, it cannot be weaponized. Um, so this is what's at stake. That's just on an energy and environment. Obviously, it has national security implications uh, and so forth. So but these issues are appropriate, and that's where you'll find these questions under those sections. Um, or in general, you can just do just a, a general search. But uh, there is this. This is a unique opportunity. I, 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 I never thought I'd live to see the day when you could have this kind of instant impact, where uh, you can go and you can say, "Mr. President, this is important. I want I want you to take action on this." They made it possible. They set up the site. All all, all I'm saying is take advantage of it. Now, I know there's people out there. Like my wife is sitting here actually with us, listening. Uh, right now, there's people all over the place. A lot of them don't exactly, they're still not convinced, you know, listening right now that they're, you know, that, you know, UFOs are visiting us or that we have, you know, that our government's made contact. And you, you said you believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that uh, that's that's the fact. Uh, what, sure. What would you say to someone like that right now to convince them, you know what, it's worth going to this site, you know, voting these issues up? maybe even submitting their own, you know, what would you say right now if you're given, you know, the rest sure. of this convince time to do us. that? Yes, convince, convince somebody. Well, I, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't, I okay. can't convince anybody in a couple of minutes. We're talking oh, about of course, 60 of years of research, but let me, let me phrase it this way. Look, okay. according to the polls, about half the American people uh, do believe that UFOs are ET in origin. I mean, that, that's well established. You can easily check it out. So we have to start with, again, if we consider an American adult about 18 or over, that gives us 125 million people mm-hmm. that already believe that ETs are, are the real are here, that UFOs are, in fact, ET in origin. I just need 3,000 of them <laughs> to go. <laughs> okay. The other 124,997,000, yeah, that's all right. Just need 3,000. Now, as far as the other 125 million, that based on the polls, extrapolating, uh, don't think yet. We know that a significant portion of them are already leaning that way. They're just not convinced. And then you have a certain percentage that are just absolutely not, don't believe it. Uh, let me speak to the ones that aren't convinced. If, you, if you're not convinced but you consider it an important issue, and then go and ask for the truth. Look, if the government can, it, can just haul out a huge array of documents and stuff that they've been sitting on, which when carefully examined show that in fact this whole thing has just been a misunderstanding, then great then that will resolve the matter, and we can move on and focus on other things. And so by asking for the truth to come out, they could they could resolve the issue one way or the other. Uh, it, and uh, that's a good reason to do it. Uh, so what can I say? And if you don't believe it's true, then don't waste your time. It's okay. And Steve, how familiar are you with the issues that are on uh, citizensbriefingbook.change.gov con- concerning the UFO ET? How familiar uh, I've, are you look, with I've those? I've checked them all. I've checked them all. Okay. Can you here, – here's my thought. You know, we get mm-hmm. – we, we record this. We podcast it out. It goes all over the world. You know, if we're going to get the 3,000 signatures online, then talk to us. Get us excited about the, the, the topics. Let's talk about some of the stuff that's listed on there. If, 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 are you that familiar with them that we can talk to them? Well, uh, but just actually, first of all, let's be careful. It's not signatures. These are anonymous votes, essentially. You're simply voting. Right, you log in now. They've got your EP, IP address. If they want, I guess, do a check, they could. But 
you know, we're talking millions and millions of votes are being cast, and it's, it's, it's not a concern. Um, all of the all of the postings on there regarding disclosure are essentially the same. They're all essentially calling for the same thing. It's saying uh, we want the truth about this UFO issue. We want the truth about the ET presence. For those that feel strongly about it, we want you to have briefings. We want you to to uh, to, to support congressional hearings. It's all about we can handle the truth, and we want it, and we want it from you. We want it now. They're all about the same. It's, I, I'm encouraging everybody to vote for all of them, and the, and the reason for that is that we want to see as many of these issues, even though they're roughly the same, they're roughly on, uh, with the same focus, up near the top of the, of the support list, mm-hmm. in other words, the popularity listings. That way, the internal people at the campaign, like let's say we just all voted for one of them, and that sh- turned up up there. They could say it was some kind of an anomaly that – that uh, some person put the question up and just had this huge address book and got all his friends or her friends to go and vote for it. But if we see a range of these issues up there, then uh, 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 multiple versions of this issue, it's going to be much harder to say it's an anomaly. So we need to vote for them all and run them right up the flagpole. I want to see three, four, five, six thousand 6,000 people. That would be 60, 60 70,000 points, which would easily put us right up at the top, if not at the top of most of these categories. It's not a lot of people. Look, any one of the other uh, myriad of subjects can do the same thing, and they may, they may marshal their resources. Uh, I don't know. It's only been out for a couple of days. I don't know how that's going to be up there, but the competition could intensify. Uh, most of the other issues, though, say pick one, healthcare, have huge standing and huge presence, and it's well known, and so forth. And so they they may not really feel the need to galvanize a campaign to get votes in on this uh, citizens briefing book uh, 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 program that, that they're running. Uh, all the more for, better for us. This is an issue that has been embargoed for 60 years. It's been manipulated, undermined, misinformed by the government itself. A government program to 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 make it as unlikely as possible that the issue would be addressed, understood, and publicly known. This is un- this ultimately is something we never want to have see again in our country. It may have been justified due to the Cold War and the problems we faced back in the 40s, but no longer. And it doesn't want to be repeated ever. We cannot have the government operate this way. And so because of that special circumstance, this issue has just simply not been properly dealt with. Now, it's getting better, and and that's why the the truth embargo, I believe, is close to ending. What we're doing here is is making up for some lost time, making up some ground. But more importantly, at this particular time, based on other things I know – I mean, I I can go on for hours about this – but. I believe that the disclosure issue is in play with the Democratic Party. I believe they plan to do it possibly in 2005 had they won the election. Um, and so what we're doing is putting a seal of approval. The American people, by going to that site, citizensbriefingbook.change.org, and voting on these disclosure submissions, we're sending a message, yes, do it. It's okay. We can handle the truth, Mr. President. Boy, that's that's important, and uh, more more important, and, and equally important. If we can really get those questions up there, so that when the press and they will go, believe me, the media is already checking it out. When the media goes there to say, well, what issues are most popular? What, what's uh, what's near the top of the list here? They're going to be dying to find out. And when they see, my goodness, they want the government to disclose the ET presence. They want the UFO cover up ended. Wow, you're going to see articles appearing in the major papers. So we have an opportunity to really have a, an immediate impact, but it has to be done now. We have to go to that site immediately and get those votes in on those questions. Okay, what if you're proposed with the question, is America really ready you know, to have this information released on them? The, the yes or no, black and white, do you think that America is really ready? Well, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I've been at this for 12 years. I've talked to an awful lot of people. Uh, I have seen no indication that the American people are not ready to learn about the ET presence. In fact, they're over ready. They're, 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 they're chomping at the bit. Um, I don't think the American people are particularly ready to hear that the stock market was about to collapse or that our, our financial institutions were collapsing. I don't think they were ready to hear about, uh, 
uh, the potential for loose nukes and terrorist attacks and so forth, but they heard it anyway. Uh, I think that this news uh, is far more interesting, profound, and I think and enlightening and uplifting than, than the kind of stuff we've been getting for the last 10, 15 years, which has not been nice. So, uh, but, you know, so also, but ultimately, look, it's the truth. And let me tell you something. Any time a country can collectively say, we're not ready for the truth, that country has got to view itself as in real trouble. Because if you're not ready and able to handle the truth, a nation, then you can be assured that bad things are going to happen to you. And so ready or not, we must have the truth of this matter. Uh, but the fact is we are quite ready. I'm not concerned about that. I don't. I think we've always – the American people themselves have always been ready. I think we could have handled it back in the 40s. We could have handled it in the 50s. This is something that the government, in their infinite wisdom, decided for us. I don't I, – I honestly I, – I can't imagine, particularly back in the 40s and 50s when, you know, had the proof been there, I think it would have been just accepted as one more change, one more – one more facet of the universe that we have fi we have discovered because it was such an uh, era of change and new technologies and, and vistas opening up before us that I think it would have been accepted as just another step in that direction. Very well said. Uh, one of the great historical questions, which will be debated for a long time to come, long after we're gone, is what would have happened if instead of changing the story at Roswell to a weather balloon, they had gone forward and followed through and confirmed that they had a crashed ET vehicle, or if the press had gotten into it sooner, or if the crash had been closer to Roswell itself, and so that they could not have contained it. Uh, they will argue this forever. I, I, I could make a case, given at the time, I could make a good case that it's possible that disclosing ET presence in 1947 might have resulted in the Cold War either never getting started at all, because it was in its very earliest stages, mm -hmm. or being shortened by many decades, thus saving the civil civilization trillions of dollars of wasted resources on an ideological standoff that got us really nowhere. Um, but then one could make a case that, no, it would have created a, a, a significant destabilizing factor that would have uh, increased the level of paranoia and actually would have led to a war. Uh, this is one of the great historical questions of all time. It's another one is like uh, that people will debate, uh, to give it a, an analogy, comparison, is what would have happened? Where would civilization be today if the Alexandria Library had not been burned down? Yeah. It, you'll never know, but it's a fun thing to debate. Um, do, do, could the American people have handled it after what they'd just gone through with World War II, yep. learning about ETs? I think they could have been handling it just fine. But, of course, uh, the whole world would have had to have addressed the issue. But, but, it, but, but we would have gotten that news before uh, we had hundreds and thousands of nuclear bombs already in the bunkers or already in storage, before we had missiles with those bombs on them. We would have handled it right after a war, when, when, the, when the bad taste of war was in everybody's mouth. I think – it might have been an ideal time to have disclosure. Well, and we but still believed in the government then. You know, yeah, and trust that, the government was very high. And that's probably one of the first things that came about that made us start distrusting what the government was telling us and started all the conspiracy theorists. That's what Lisa with just whispered so to me. Many things. You know, how, yeah. if, if they're going to lie about something like this, you know, you know, what else are they lying about? You know, can you even trust them when they if they even come out and say, and this is something I was going to ask you, let's say they decide, okay, we're going to disclose everything, and the next thing you know, it's like, oh, well, here's everything, and we get these forms, and nothing's there, you know. Yeah, it's all blacked it, it's out. It's all, you know, yeah, it's only got, like, somebody's name, or if it just says, you know, we, we looked everywhere, there's nothing there. There's no documents on this. You know, Roswell really was just a weather balloon. I mean, can we even trust them then? It's, it's, it's hard to... You know, we had the JFK. We had someone talking about JFK last week. And you can put a laundry list of stuff that says, you know, all this stuff that we lost trust in the government from, you know, could they all stack right. one more on there? Yeah, let's respond to that. First of all, sure. disclosure is, is unambiguous. Uh, and many of these these uh, these uh, points made to the briefing book 
are clear. That we want disclosure. Now, now disclosure is 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 very clear. It's, it is the formal acknowledgement of the ET presence. Now, the government comes out and says, yes. I say the government. I mean the administration, Barack Obama, uh, with the support of his, obviously, his uh, his leadership team. It says, yes, there is an ET presence. There's nothing ambiguous about that. So if they do that, they that, that, that that's it. Now, they will probably provide some supporting evidence to make the point, uh, to, 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 to dot the I's and cross the T's, but uh, I don't think anybody is going to be doubtful that they're playing a game with that. Now, if the government were to go a different route, which is not disclosed, but to say, okay, enough is enough. We're going to release uh, everything we got, and, and then you make up your own mind, um, which they could do. Not that's not disclosure. That's simply the releasing of more information and documents. It's not acknowledging the ET presence. Um, well, let me say this: after 60 years of research, given all that, all the people that have been involved and are still around, all that we know, and we know a lot, the websites, the networking, and everything else, I can assure you that if they dump that material out. If it's missing anything, we're going to know it. If it's misrepresentation, we're going to know it. If it's simply a lot of BS, they're going to rip it to pieces within hours. Uh, so if they try to pull a fast one that way, it's not going to go very well for them, and then it'll just make things a whole lot worse. On the other hand, if they really lay it all out there, and it and under inspection by the hundreds of researchers, given all that we know, it demonstrates that, in fact, the whole thing was just a misunderstanding. And, well, I guess I'm going to have to find another line of work. But you want to know something? I'm not really worried about that. I'm really not worried at all because the ET presence is a fact. It's not even close. There's a whole lot of things out there that are up in the air, like where Osama bin Laden is mm-hmm. or whether he's even alive. I don't know. Well, he just sent us a message, so. He did. He did send us, but we can't confirm yet. It's like they always say, but it hasn't been confirmed yet. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of stuff that we don't know for sure. On the ET presence, it's not even close, folks. The evidence is overwhelming. Now, ET presence means what? Non-human entities or entities that are clearly didn't get born up the road, right, yeah. engaging our planet. Now, say, oh, no, 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 they're not extraterrestrial. They're, they're from another dimension. Hey, it's extraterrestrial as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Or they're from the future or the past. You know, I guess maybe that's sort of not the same as coming from another planet, but it's still pretty important, right? So the government can come out and say, well, you know, we didn't tell you because, you know, they're not really from another planet. They're from the future, so we didn't think it was a big deal. I don't <laughs> think so. So we, we lump it together, the extraterrestrial presence, a non-human or extraordinary engagement of a human race by exceptional technology demanded and controlled by uh, sentient beings. That's what we're talking about. Uh, but let me tell you, if you're going to put your money down, right, again, and you want to win, right, you put your money down on space-bearing sentient beings from another biosphere, right, who just have better physics than we do. That's got the house odds. It doesn't mean it's absolute, but that's the house thought. But when I say that extraterrestrial presence is certain, I mean the fact that they are engaging us, that they are here, is certain. Where they are from is not certain. Exactly how their craft work, not certain. What their intentions are, not certain, right? But are they here? That's a fact. Take it to the bank. Well, I can't imagine that, that you could possibly think that their intentions were to do us harm. I mean, if they have the capability of coming from God knows where, you know, then why wouldn't they have just blown our planet up to smithereens in the first place if their intentions were to do us harm? A difficult and complex exopolitical question. (laughs) Uh, There are many ways to do harm without actually blowing you up. Uh, That's true. (laughs) Let's just say that let's just say that the question of their intentions is open. Yeah. We know the things they could do and haven't done. That's that's helpful. We know some things they have done, which are a little concerning. I think that one way to think about it is this. It's quite possible that they're doing some things which they don't consider harm, to be harmful, but in fact we consider to be harmful. So what you would have is, a, how would you say, 
a a dis uh, a, a di- disagreement of perspective. Yeah. Uh, it's like you know, you go to the doctor, you go to the dentist, right? And the dentist is drilling for a root canal. <laughs> I mean, you're going, uh, kill me now, kill me now. <laughs> the dentist is doing a wonderful thing for you. He's going to give you a new tooth. He's going to save you from an infection. It's all great, but you're going. I can't go through this. <laughs> so it, it, it's 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 complicated, but but clearly. Uh, we need to be concerned if our if our government has been attacking these entities in the past, shot at them, killed them. We we need to be concerned about it. not necessarily because they did it, but because they didn't tell us they did it. Yeah. In other words, I'm not in a position to say that in a particular situation we are or should not have, or should have or should not have, fired a weapon at an extraterrestrial craft. But I am certainly in a position to say that if my government is launching weapons against a possibly million-year advanced civilization that is engaging us and not letting me know about it, that really irritates me. Uh, in other words, it's bad. the government frequently – do you know, it's the whole thing, you can do anything as long as you don't tell anybody? Yeah. Right. Well, that's a really bad idea. Okay, it's a really bad idea. And so, if if you've got people that are supposedly standing in for you, and they're thinking, you know, let's let's go ahead and shoot at that thing. You know, (laughs) what is it? A mile wide? Yeah. Okay. What's it doing? About eight hundred eighty thousand miles an hour. Let's shoot at it. You know, because you know we're we're, and 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 there's no consultation. There's there's no oversight. We're not we're not informed about what's going on. Uh, this is really bad. I think that may have happened. So there, there is a concern, right? This is complicated stuff. We could spend hours debating it, but it gets down to a simple matter. What's the point of having a, a open, supposedly open, democratic republic if you're going to end up shoving more and more important matters into the secrets, into the closet, secret, covert, hidden, underground? What is the point? Right? I don't think that's what the founders had in mind, and I think there's ample evidence that this whole trend towards the covert, the secret, the hidden is 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 is, is destroying the republic. Well, that's it's why un- I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Go ahead. I just was, I was going to say that's why I don't I don't believe the government will ever fully it. They will never come out and say yes, we believe these exist. If if anything, they're going to release the documents. Because they're going to be afraid, I would think, of the backlash if they concretely say, yes, they exist, we have known about them, and then you get into the way that we have treated them. Um, I just think they'll, that if they do anything, they're going to release the documents and neither admit no, or deny, like they've done with Agent Orange and everything else. Here's why I disagree with you. Uh, here, here's the principal reason why they can't take that. So it, I understand what you're saying. The simple fact is if the United States does not acknowledge the extraterrestrial presence very soon, another nation is going to. In that case, one, we're embarrassed. Two, we're second rate behind the curve, and we still have to put up with the backlash. And so the question is now not if, but when and who. What nation will be the disclosure nation? What leader will be the disclosure leader? And when will it happen? And if the Obama administration makes the mistake of waiting just one week too long, then we're going to be spending a lot of time watching cable television and listening to the leaders of the People's Republic of China tell us what they know about the ET presence. Or President Sarkozy telling us about the ET presence. And if that happens, and the French become the dis- uh, France becomes a disclosure nation, you'll never be able to eat another French fry in this country. <laughs> It'll be freedom fries for the rest of our lives. <laughs> so it just ain't an American game anymore. So backlash, yeah. no backlash. I'm sorry, the game is up. Are you going to disclose or is somebody else going to disclose? It's just that simple. Now you said something about, uh, have you, I think you've said it twice, that the dem- you believe that the Democrats are ready to disclose, and you know, yeah. you even said at one point, I think that you think it's going to be the spring. Um, yes. Can Can you uh, explain that a little bit? 
Yeah, if you go to paradigmresearchgroup.org, my website, paradigmresearchgroup.org, you can see a whole bunch of information about John Podesta, about the Rockefeller Initiative, Hillary Clinton, Bill Richardson, Leanne Panetta. Um, the whole, the, the, the principal core, now Richardson has dropped out, but that's less important than the fact that he was appointed. There is a substantial connection now between some of the key players in the Democratic Party and the ET UFO disclosure issue. And this is on the web. You can find it. Just Google John Podesta UFO or Hillary Clinton UFO or Bill Richardson UFO. Um, uh, go to the Disclosure Initiative uh, uh, site on my site. Go to presidentialufo.com. Uh, Grant Cameron's my uh, co-author with uh, on a book that we're we're putting together right now. And you can all there. So, I mean, we've been following this for years. It's not an accident that Podesta came out calling for a release of all the UFO documents in 2002, 2003. It's not an accident that Richardson uh, challenged the, the Roswell explanation in 2004. It's not an accident that Podesta was appointed head of the transition team. Richardson was appointed to Commerce. And it's not an accident that Hillary Clinton, who was fully aware, along with Leanne Panetta, of the Rockefeller Initiative that was going on right under their nose at the White House, 1993 to 1996, were appointed Secretary of State and, 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 and uh, nominated for uh, director of the CIA. None of this is an accident. The Democrats are moving on this. But they have two problems that they can't get away from. Not, there's no spin doctor in Washington, D.C. that can spin them out of these two problems. One, if they wait too long, another nation is going to disclose. And people say, oh, no, no, no. We're too highly respected in the world, too loved. Uh, and we have so much, too much power and influence over the rest of the world that no one would dare do that. I'd like to know what universe they're living in. <laughs> yeah, really. In okay. And secondly, if they uh, wait every, every, every week or a week that they wait, that truth embargo, that 61 year truth embargo, becomes their truth embargo. And so if they say, well, 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 we'll wait until the next term, well, then they're going to have to answer the question, why didn't you tell us four years ago, three years ago, two years ago? They, they avoid all of that by getting it done within the first 100 days, which means between January 20 and April 30. And that's why I believe it will happen in the spring. Now, it's, I it's lost a, what I was going to say. We've got snow plows going by, and it's sounding like the building is going to yeah, be crashing I, I, down on our I heads. see this flashing light hit my eyes. We have a question on the um, uh, on our website, actually, from a truth seeker in uh, Norway. Uh, he says, uh -huh. uh, there's a rumor that someone close to John Podesta told film producer James Fox that there's a UFO movement going on inside the transition team. Uh, perhaps you know something about that? Actually, my understanding was that someone learned that uh, – it's a little reverse – that it was reported to James that someone with in the transition team informed Podesta that there was a UFO movement outside, right? Uh, so it's not quite that. It's a little bit of the reverse. But I can assure you that, that the John Podesta – and Hillary Clinton and Bill Richardson and now Barack Obama are fully aware of the disclosure movement, have been for a long time. Obama would be the, the, the last one to the party here. Understandable. It's all right. doesn't matter. Uh, they're fully aware of it. And are they crazy about it? No, because it's potentially it, – it is clearly still the – the most radioactive issue in the world. I, I keep hearing about how Social Security is the third rail of American politics. Nonsense. We talk about Social Security all the time and have for decades. The third rail of American politics is the UFO ET issue. Nothing else is even close. All right? Um, you touch that issue by, by in a formal way as a politician, and you're, you're toasted. I mean, you're literally burnt to a crisp right on the spot. That's why they have shunned it, except for a few very, very courageous people. Uh, but that's all changing. Uh, the media coverage has grown exponentially. Uh, I logged in 1,100 articles, uh, mainstream print articles on this subject, uh, on the Paradigm Research Group website for 2008. We're on a pace so far this year for 2,300 articles, mainstream, English language, no alternative press. Uh, in 2009. So everything has changed. Uh, we're in a new new time. It's really a matter of getting it done. 
Now, look, I know there are other there are other problems going on. We got economic collapse, we got environmental, we got invasions, we got all kinds of. So what? When haven't we had these things? You know, right? When like, haven't there been some crisis? Something like this. So would the maybe, fact that that's happening isn't going to change the fact that it has to we have to disclose. I say something like this might actually take the attention off the economy for a, for a week at least. I mean, you know. Well, this this has the potential to change everything. It could it could you help the economy. You announce the EC disclosure. Yeah, you yeah. announce the ET presence, and you bring that technology forward. And there, it will, it will open up the door to rethink everything, and we may discover some solutions we didn't even know existed. And so not only is it a, a huge mistake to, quote, use whatever crisis we're facing as an excuse to continue a truth embargo that is already 15 years past its prime, but by ending the truth embargo, we actually may bring to the table some of the answers that we need to deal with the issues of our time. And so from a moral, political, uh, and simple um, common sense basis, disclosure has got to happen. It simply makes no sense. There is there are fundamental benefits from maintaining this embargo. The only benefits are to a few people uh, and uh, they, they simply don't even, they don't, they don't match up. With the upside, so it, it's a the, the, the equation itself is now in our favor, but it's like everything else. Someone's got to do it, right? It still has to get done, and America has been absolutely dying from the fact that for decades now you have lots of great ideas or things that need to get done, and we know about it and we talk about it, but it doesn't get done. Well, that's got to stop, folks, or you're gonna, the next bridge you cross is going to drop you into the ocean. Right, the next dollar you spend may be worth only twenty cents. <laughs> yeah. We got to get things done, and one of the things we got to get done is disclosure. And we need to send that message to the president. They created this wonderful opportunity, citizens, plural, briefing, book, dot change, dot gov. Go there, register, and put a search in on disclosure or extraterrestrial or UFO. Bring up the position submissions regarding disclosure and vote them all up every vote is 10 points we need about 3,000 of you to do that you know we're, we're right at the top well of course we're going to press this issue for the next six days believe me uh, emails have gone out to tens of thousands of people it's on facebook we're going to put let's get it done now let's let's make it absolutely unambiguous in other words i want to see the disclosure issue on the national security say a list sitting at 295,000 points, and the next one sitting at like 100,000 points. Mm-hmm. Let's let's be absolutely unambiguous about this. The presence of extraterrestrials engaging our planet is the most important issue in the world, and nothing else is, is more important. And the fact that the government has misrepresented it or hidden it doesn't make it less important. It makes it even more important. And so I'm really sorry about the economy. I'm sorry about whoever invades who next. I'm sorry about all the other issues. But the idea that somehow they are more important than this just is not logical. It's not good policy. And it won't float. So let's get on with it. Let's end this embargo once and for all. And let's have that truth to deal with as we face, and we'll have to face, the other problems that we are addressing right now. But at least we'll have the whole picture. And we'll also have, uh, hopefully, an improving relationship with our government, more trust, not only in the American people and in the American government, but other people around the world in the American government who they no longer trust. And that's something that's really And needed. that's not good. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay, uh, Steve, uh, I just want to you know, let you know and let everybody listening know we will be putting this address up on our website. Already done. Uh, already done, so we're going to make sure that we have it out there for people to go to. Uh, mm-hmm. That's citizensbriefingbook.change.gov. Uh, Steve, I'd also like to say, yeah, uh, what you're doing, you know, work-wise is going worldwide. And, uh, you know, our question earlier was from a guy from Norway. And he wanted to say thank you, you know, a, a special thank you to you for the job that you're doing, because what you're doing is going out, you know, to the other countries, and they're seeing that. So, uh, oh yeah, we have a strong international presence on it. By the way, you all are broadcasting in addition to the net. You're also broadcast out of Wheeling, West Virginia, right? Yes. Correct. 
Let me tell you a quick little story. Okay, we we got to make it quick, though. I got a number of years ago, I, had a, I went to a dinner party. It was set up so I could meet a member of the uh, military, a, um, and, and, and a command sergeant in intelligence. We had a little discussion. He confirmed that Roswell was real. He confirmed the ET presence. And then it, it, the last thing he said to me was this. He said, you probably don't know this. And I said, what? He said, you want to know where the, the, the principal focus on the ET issue is in America? I said, sure. Thinking, you know, Area 51, Wright Patterson. He said, no. The principal focus of interest, the area where we inter- interact with this issue, is West Virginia. Wow. And that's all he said. I was never able to follow up on that, but I have done a little research, and uh, I can see why that may be the case. So West Virginia may have a special place in all of this very soon. We had a, we had a guest. Our original guest tonight was uh, Frank Pacino, and uh, unfortunately he was able to come. But his book was on uh, – it's called Shoot Him Down, uh, Flying Saucer Air Wars in 1952. I'm not sure if you've mm-hmm. heard of that, uh, but it, it was about uh, something called uh, the Flatwood Monster uh, yeah, down in Braxton County, which he's researched. He did uh, 20-something years of research and shows, you know, that there was uh, supposedly crash landing here in uh, Willing at a place at Ogilvy Park, and he's talked about the crash landing down in Braxton County. And he says that, you know, it, you have, West Virginia is a UFO hotbed, so so that maybe that confirm a little bit. So. Uh, this guy was going a little further, though. He was saying that this is where significant interactions are taking place. I'll leave you with this. Uh, West Virginia is a is close enough to be a drive from Washington, D.C. by car. Mm-hmm. Drive out, drive back. Nobody knows you left. Nobody knows you came back. Uh, something you can't do if you're going other distances. Uh, it is loaded with underground facilities, so let's just... We throw that out there. West Virginians may be in for some surprises. They may be at the ground center of this issue, but we won't know the, the, the full of, uh, full truth of that until after disclosure. We'll see what happens. Well, wow. Thank you, wait. Stephen. Steve, thank you very much yeah, for, for everything great. you do. And, uh, as things go on and as things progress, we will have you back to uh, announce different things that are being disclosed because we believe we're going to get those 3,000 votes. I I really appreciate it. I look forward to coming back and visiting y'all. Have a good night, Steve. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Interesting. What is the... What's wrong? The the big hotel. God. Uh, Greenbrier. Yes. That's what I and was that's, trying. That that's to why be, I was doing. Like, well, big, I, I, big. You were, you were, I thought you were I, like trying to. Oh, I was sign having language. a seizure. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so big. <I> didn't. <laughs> but the Greenbrier, you know, they know. Turn my, wife's, turn my wife's mic on real quick. Okay, now. What color is she? Uh, green. Is she green? There you go. There you go. Hi, Lisa. Hi. See, we didn't introduce her in the beginning. I didn't know if she wanted to talk or not. Now, you're someone that you don't know. You don't really believe too much on UFOs, I'm guessing, right? No. We, we don't really talk. You don't think about it too much. What do you think about what he said? I think he has a, a good debate going on, shall we say. Mm-hmm. Um, He had some good issues that he talked about and um, the one that really um, got my attention was before like you had said I asked the question or um, had the question does he think that the government's actually going to talk about it and if they do kind of like Lola said about the you know the backlash of all of it mm-hmm. and revealing that so um, that was something that I was interested in so I think I think you addressed that pretty good we want to beat everybody else's what it all comes down to, I think. And now it's like a competition. Yeah. Well, let's hope they take it that far. Right. I mean, when when the last time there was anything that the government was involved with that ha- was dubious at best, did have they ever actually admitted to? You know, like with the Agent Orange, they'll pay for, you know, finally for treatment for the vets. and all, But have they ever, they have never said conclusively yes this was something that we used and our soldiers became ill from it and they usually point the finger back of i'm thinking of the uh gulf war syndrome mm-hmm. you've, you've heard a lot about that and, yeah. and i know one of people that you know suffer from but it's always oh, what's in their mind or it's yeah. this or my big thing is number one you're the one that sent them there you yeah know, good reason bad reason it doesn't matter we did send them there we should take care of them let's not just say well you know you've got a a mental problem you weren't able yeah. to handle it and you know being a history major i've read this and this goes back other countries do the same thing yeah. world war one uh they they said the people came back that were shooken up shaken up about it and they couldn't operate anymore they were invalids almost 
oh well they just weren't men you know and that oh, and I that know. ends up becoming the thing even today that happens so you know and you have full disclosure oh they're just all kooks you know yeah. they're you know they they are they're all sitting at their computers late at night posting on message yeah. boards and and that's not the case i mean it's and you were talking about the greenbrier i i could see people coming here nobody really talks about much of what happens here and if, if i remember correctly somewhere up near there there's a uh, and i cannot remember the name of wrong it, turn no no not wrong turn he's a horror movie aficionado <laughs> that was that was greenbrier Okay. Well, uh, there's this area where there's no in and out of radio signals. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe that would be a good place because they track all that. Well, they, if you wanted to go meet something. I mean, I'm just, that's a weird They have shown all underneath the Greenbrier is almost like your, um, the capital, the second capital. They have enough room and everything to move, literally, Everybody. the entire government there in case of a nuclear attack or something because it is close to washington i mean you, you know you've got one out in the west too mm -hmm. in the rockies but underneath the green bar that was one the of the biggest one, kept yeah. secrets for the longest time have you ever heard of city of the cities of the underworld the show i think on history channel or something like that have you ever heard of that mm -mm. they had cities of the underworld if you can get a chance to look it up um they they replay them all the time i'm pretty sure it's history channel it's a show that talks about what's underneath, like New York. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a fascinating show because what's underneath our cities or everywhere is just amazing. And they had one about the Greenbrier, and they went through. They took them on a tour of it. They mm -hmm. took them and showed them, and it was just amazing. You know, they had They're facilities. They could last for years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the doors that they closed, I mean, it was – they're, they're like uh, three they're feet huge. thick. Yeah. Nothing could go yeah. through there. Yeah. And it's – it's a great show if anybody gets a chance to watch it. They went underneath Vietnam through the tunnels where the Viet Cong would tunnels, yeah. sneak up. And it was crazy. The New York one was fascinating, too. All right. I, I wanted to bring up real quick sure. what he was talking about, West Virginia. If you remember when we had uh, Jeff Wamsley on with uh -huh. Point Pleasant, you know, I always bring up Mothman stuff. But part of it was in the TNT area, which was all these housing igloos and tunnels underground, you know, put and hidden in this, like, sanctuary type of atmosphere out in the environment, you know, uh, covered over with you know, all kinds of barricades. And I mean, and he, they said that only like a handful of them are open and all the other ones are still used by the government with, you know, leadings underground into the big series of tunnels and stuff like that. And he was talking about, you know, West Virginia, all this stuff going on, you know, that was a government, you That's know, so thing in, in yeah. a tiny little town, you know, on the Ohio river. So yep. we've got to do some There's research. We've got to yep. find the UFOs. Yep. <laughs> So. Okay, gentlemen. All right, who we ladies? got next week, Nick? Uh, we have next week Eddie Benitez. Uh, he's going to talk to us. He was on a haunting uh, TV show. Do you remember if you've heard of that one? Uh, it, well, I won't go into it. We'll talk about it next week. But He plays uh, the guitar, too. He plays the guitar. Great musician. We'll be uh, playing some of his uh, songs on the air. Uh, some of them supposedly help change people's lives, heal them, all kinds of stuff. So it'll be interesting, Lola. Okay. <laughs> I'm all sorry, right. you're not near the microphone. I'm I shouldn't have did that. I just look over and she's over. I'm sorry. All right. All right, everybody, it's a winter wonderland outside, so be careful on yeah. the roads. Don't get any accidents. Be safe. Until next time, don't be afraid, only believe. <laughs>